It's all How you doing, man? You look good, Ron. You know, I had my second shot today, man, and I feel great. That's that's good because sometimes people get affected by the second shot. You know, what? they get affected by the second shot. What? I fell right in there. I fell in there. I'm trying to get out. I'm trying to get out. I fell in there. You know. I'm the only bass player in the band. Come on. <laughs> good to see you, my friend. It's good to be seen. Thank you. Okay, I got about four questions to ask you that you can kind of enjoy being okay. responding to. Okay. Sure. What is what is the first thing you'll do when you finally go back to work? What will be the first thing I do? Mm -hmm. um, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I will have hoped to have been practicing enough so that when I do go back to work, I can represent who I am, who I've become f to this point. And it would be great for the camaraderie. Um, that's what I miss the most to be uh -huh. able to create with people. Okay. Okay. The second question is, uh, uh, how do you explain to people what you've been doing since you haven't been working? You know, I get that question all the time. Say, man, what have you been doing since you haven't been playing? Well, this is what I've been doing. I tell them my activities, whatever they are, you know, and that's, they, they don't say how you feeling or, you know, how's everything else? You know, they want to know, hey man, well, <laughs> What have you been doing? So, uh, uh, what I think th I think that's a defensive question for people that ask it. Okay, well they want to answer. So right now I'm I'm sitting in their shoes. I'm standing yes. in their shoes right now. <laughs> I, I I've I've been teaching and uh, writing some music, taking my my uh, chances at writing some music that that I hadn't thought about before. Mm, mm. And and it's a, a real great challenge. And I tell you, as an artist, what's happened is somehow we lost purpose. But me trying to write this music and to teach these students, it gives me a purpose every day. So it gives me a reason to wake up and I got to prepare myself for it. So that's what I've been doing. You, you think uh, uh, teaching isn't enough of a purpose in and of itself? Oh no, I, I I do, but the fact is, see, I I never did it this concentrated. Okay. Okay. Before. Yeah. So so now the fact is, you know, um, for me, traveling, playing, uh, it was never concentrated like this. Okay. And so now that it's concentrated, yes, of course, it's, it it is a primary purpose, but. Uh, I'm into it a lot more than I was before. Okay. Uh, third question is, uh, have you made any more new friends that you don't mind talking about music with? That I don't want to talk about? That you do. Oh, yeah. I, I, I've made some new friends and it's been really great because what I managed to do is on Friday nights have a forum to talk with musicians, teachers, just general friends. And there have been friends that I've had that have brought new friends okay. into the room. And it's been really a great experience because I've expanded my friendship base. Mm -hmm. And these meetings are once a month, once a week, how often do they meet? Once a week Okay. on Fridays. I actually have two sets of Zoom meetings that I do on Fridays that I did, didn't did do before the pandemic. And now I have two separate groups of friends oh, that wow. I meet with. Mm -hmm. Are they all over the place or just in the New York area? Do you know where they're physically located? Yeah, I've had some chime in from Italy. Really? I've had some chime in from New Zealand. Mm. Um, it's really nice because the, the, my friendship base has expanded to the point where people say, hey, you know, they're having a conversation at 9.30, let's chime in. And so because of uh, the internet, it goes all over the world. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, like they just try to set up 
when. I mean, I had a conversation today with the teachers. She's in Italy now. Mm. She's saying, well, I'm falling asleep now. I'm going to try to take a nap so that I can come <laughs> to your, <laughs> your Zoom tonight at 9.30. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. How is she, by the way? How's her dad? She, he's good. He's good. Okay. She, she's good. You know, she's in Italy. Hopefully, there won't be any issues with her coming back with the visa. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. I'll convey to both of them my regards. I definitely will. Okay. And the last question is, uh, you, like me, haven't, been, haven't made a gig in over a year right now, you know? And, and my question to you is, uh, what, other, what other instrument would you play right now if you could? Whew, if I could. Uh, probably make piano, mm -hmm. because I think that I could, I could uh, handle all of the things that I'm trying to do okay. now with trying to write new music. Mm -hmm. I'd be able to handle that a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to slug a piano around every place I go. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Uh, do you spend time at it daily or every, only when you're trying to write a project? Oh, no, no, no. I, for, for this, I'm trying to, exp you know, Ron, I'm just trying to expand my horizon and, and try to expand <clears throat> my scope of knowledge. I've gotten some books about orchestration that I can't read, but yeah. I'm getting to the point where I tried to read it. Yeah, sure. Read them. And and you know, the fact is what's really great is I have an orchestra at my fingertips because I, you know, you with synthesizers, you can hear how an oboe and violin sound together because you can try it, you can see it sure, here. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So Every morning I wake up and if I'm not teaching a class, I'm trying to mess with these notes, just like Mr. Ron Carter says, trying to find a better note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to do it with, with combinations. You know, some of it is by hook or crook. And some of it is like, yeah, well, this is what this says here. So like, you should try this interval. So I'm trying, I'm mm -hmm. trying, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to reinvent myself and grow. Okay. Uh, how early are your lessons starting? You mentioned lessons. How early do they start? How long? Um, how early? When, uh, some, the earliest is nine o'clock, okay. nine, 9 a.m. Okay. And that's, that's a person that's in, <laughs> in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Got your wag, indeed. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's so, so it's, it's interesting. My, my, my main day is Thursdays. Thursdays, Mm -hmm. I'm on from 11 a.m. till about 5.30 p.m. Okay, good. What orchestration book are you uh, spending time Oh, uh, It's called a Modern... I'd have to go get it. No, 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 that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was close about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Don Sebeski has one. I don't know who you're reading, but he's a, it's a very good book, the Don Sebeski orchestration book. I had heard about this. This one, do you know Tim Timothy Adams, percussion no, player? Yeah. Timothy Adams turned me on to this one. It was uh, Andre Previn oh, had, right. had uh, told him about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's I, I just, it it escapes me now. I mean, if I, I go up and get it and show yeah, to you. I just wanted to know, you know. But it was for my, it was, it was, this is the, this is a guy that, that Andre Previn uh, worked with or studied with from Europe. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he my recommended it. Yeah. Lady, was it was a, a jazz orchestration book or a classical orchestration book? No, 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 it's a classical orchestration book. It's for, it's for modern orchestra, mm -hmm. you know, so. Um, but it's very interesting. It has a thing, uh, it talks about the, the frequencies of certain instrumental combinations how, and how they affect the uh, human body. Really? So, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, hmm. I'm well, trying, Ron. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, well, that's that's a whole other element. You know, generally when arrangers I've spoken with and work with, they just write the music. And they, right, right, they right. Really haven't gotten to the vibe, physical vibe <laughs> that it does to to the audience necessarily. Right. You know, of course I hope they like it, but they don't. They haven't gotten to that kind of a analysis yet. You know. Yeah. Uh, are you, are you yeah. waiting for a specific project in your head? No, no, I, I started, see, 
you know, for the past 20 years, I've in my own space attempted to write uh, orchestral music. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I hadn't been really, uh, I don't know what's the word strong, but I hadn't played it for many people. Some of my friends, I played it for some of my friends. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I actually played it for Chick. I played one piece for Chick. Oh, wow. And he said, man, that is really some great stuff. And so I got re-inspired, you know. Um, and, and Gil Goldstein actually heard the piece and he said the same thing. And so like, he got to the point where I was trying to um, get it orchestrated. He was orchestrating it for me. And, okay. and we actually have a chart. I mean, we have a, a score mm -hmm. for it because I played it into the computer and you know. Yeah, yeah. And so in NYU, I had done a talk at NYU and you never know who's in the audience, but this is pre COVID. Yeah. And the orchestra director was in the audience. And he said, listen, I would love to hear what you've been talking about, you trying to write, you know, yeah, yeah. these orchestral pieces. And I said, sure. And so I let him hear three pieces. And he said, Oh, definitely, we've got the orchestra will do one of these pieces, definitely. Mm -hmm. And so we were, I was slated to have one of my pieces yeah, performed yeah, yeah. and COVID happened. Of course, yeah, yeah. So um, that's, that's it. And so at that point he had heard one piece that he wanted to do and they were gonna actually do, uh, the dance department was, was gonna be involved too and maybe choreograph it. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, man, that's only one piece. I need to try to have something else to yeah, present yeah. just in case. So. I've been in the throes of these three pieces that I have. Okay. And I'm constantly working on that to get them right. Now that you aren't working any gigs, are you getting any sleep? <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you know, actually, <laughs> I, I might've gotten more sleep doing the gigs. <laughs> you know, um, Ron, I think it's relative. I think time is relative to whether you have it or you don't. Well, I have good time, man. I mean, I don't know if you talked about. Well, I know that you got good time. You call it Checkpoint Charlie, maybe. I know that. So, you know. But but the thing is, I, I believe it's a it's time is a conscious effort for you to make it happen. Yep. If if you need to have time, you need to make that happen. When you don't what happens is you find that you have a whole lot of time, but you don't do anything with it. Yeah, it's you know, too late you gotta get, Right, right, you know? Yeah. And I find myself, you know, after six o'clock, you know, falling asleep after having, <laughs> <laughs> having dinner. <laughs> so you get your little nap before, yeah, yeah. you know, and and then, you know, I'm watching basketball. I mean, the, my Lakers is my team. So, at 10 o'clock, I'm watching basketball yeah, yeah. when I should be going to sleep and I don't go to sleep until like one o'clock, you yeah, know, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, w w one last question. Yeah. Um, w one of the things I miss about not having work gigs is, is I don't need to make decisions all the time. Hmm. On the bandstand, we're always deciding something right then. Right. Because our decisions are important. Yeah. Our decisions are critical to the success of that music for that night. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, as a drummer, you make the same decisions I make. I but on those same gigs, you don't have to make them because the gigs don't exist. How do, you, how do you feel about not having that responsibility gig after gig, night after night? I, do you miss that? Yes. But I, quite, I, it's a very interesting point that you bring up, Ron, because 100% I do. But what's happened is me being in my room that I have with people coming in and we talk, it's just like playing because if there's 15, 20 people in the room and you see the room and you're the commentator, mm -hmm. you call on people or you let people speak. Yeah. 
And what happens is that there's a conversation that one person brings into the room and other people chime in. It's the same thing as like, it's like playing. And, and me making the decisions about talking about certain subjects mm -hmm. that I would ask about what's happened to me is now other people in the room have after, after the conversations we've had, have called me or texted me, said, man, that was great, man. I never thought about it from that perspective. So it's like doing the same thing, Ron. It's mm -hmm. like playing and you have a conversation with this person and then you ask a question that really spurns that conversation on and somebody else says, oh, I'd like to chime in on that. Okay. So it's like that, that, mm -hmm. that kind of situation, mm -hmm. you know. But of course, I much prefer to be playing. Well, that's, a separate, yeah, that's a separate issue. That's a that was a, that 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 uh, correlation that that equivalent, right? In the decisions, you know, it's, it feels strange for me not to, on a daily basis, not to be concerned about the right note. You know, when, when I'm going. Yeah, to, right, right. I understand. I'm, I'm there, right there. You know, and now, man, I haven't thought about that on in that level to that right. extent. Right. Know, I practice. Right. I have students. I'm, of course, I'm concerned about that. But to be actually responsible for that on the moment, it's just kind of. It took me a moment to understand that that I'm not have. I don't have to. I don't have that enjoyable responsibility. <laughs> right. 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 No, that. I could definitely understand that. I mean, because it took me a long time to have purpose. Yeah. As an artist, if you don't have a gig, if you're not practicing for a tour. What's your purpose? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. You know, so I've managed to flip the purpose and try to have a point where I can get to the end of these compositions and have something that's representative of the time that I spent trying to do this. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of galvanizes a purpose for me to do that. And time is time is still of the essence. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. I know you got a big schedule, and I know you're hearing a, uh, ha another movement in your head. So I'm gonna uh, thank you for taking a moment from writing the B flat seven for four, four horns and drums. <laughs> <laughs> and, and thank you for taking the time to stop by and say hello, man. For Ron Carter, yeah. anytime, it's <laughs> always. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Ron. Man. Okay. Love you. See you later. Okay. Bye.